Good evening, viewers. Welcome to the panel, Deep Tech in Map Making. Map making is no longer what it used to be 10 years ago. The advent of new age technologies such as artificial intelligence and machine learning have completely transformed the map making process. With the growing demand for geolocation services across verticals, it has become pertinent to discuss how deep technologies are revolutionizing the industry. To speak more about the same, it's an absolute pleasure to have with us today, Mr. Eric Bauman, the Chief Technology Officer of TomTom. Tom. Eric, thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure to have you on board. Well, really the pleasure is mine. Thank you so uh, so much for having me. Yeah, Great Eric. Yeah, thank you so much, Eric. Uh, so Eric, how has engineering transformed the map making process over the years? Sure. Um, you know, I think, uh, Digital map making is, was one of really the first big data applications. And um, as such, uh, we really got started before all of the kind of data engineering technology, which is really quite commonplace today, was fully mature. Um, and <clears throat> it's also a really, really hard problem. Uh, it, it's uh, much harder to automate many parts of digital map making. And so uh, I think the map making industry has been caught in an interesting position of being both uh, leaders and then eventually by having led early a little bit followers. And now as we, especially as we move into the cloud and we have uh, you know, effectively unlimited compute and really a lot of progress that's been made in other industries from e-commerce and social media, we're able to bring the, those technologies to bear uh, and use them to help solve the core map making Problem. They on their own, they they really don't solve it. It's quite a different problem to solve. It's much, uh, you know, it's a different kind of graph problem, for example. But it's really, I think, it's a really interesting moment at the nexus of, um, on the one hand, the rising expectation from consumers that we're really modeling the world at an increasing level of detail, and the need for freshness. And uh, even though something that you know, we, you look at a map and it seems like a simple thing. It really is not a simple thing underneath. So it's a, it's a fascinating moment for us. Yeah, you mentioned uh, map making is not really a simple thing, Eric. So right now there's an advent of deep technologies in almost every verticals. So what is the role that deep technologies are playing when it comes to map making? Yeah, so um, on the one hand, there is a, you know, there are significant opportunities to use really advanced statistics and, and kind of low fidelity observation. So at TomTom, Tom, for example, we collect uh, what we call uh, probe data from, I don't know, close to a billion cars in the world. So we're not able to see the individual cars, but we can see where cars go. And so what emerges from that is a uh, kind of a statistical model of where roads are and how cars are traveling on those roads. And you would think from that, that, that you know, you could just sort of figure out what the road network is. Um, but it's much harder than that because that signal is really, really noisy. Um, but now as, as more and more cars become, uh, are more and more connected, the fidelity of the data that we start to see is more interesting. Um, and so on the one hand, uh, you know, we, we need to use uh, all of the kind of, you know, call it deep learning, deep data technologies to really pull a very faint signal from this and then packaged in a form that people can really depend on, you know, for their safety. It's not, unlike uh, some applications, you know, the world of advertising, for example, approximate is good enough. In our industry, approximate is not really ever good enough. Like it's always got to be converging on reality. And when you really think about the range of human activities that depend on this data, it's, uh, it's a lot more than, you know, having fun or buying Christmas presents. It's really getting people from A to B safely and efficiently. Uh, so, Eric, how uh, uh, you know are, is the demand for geolocation services growing? Yeah, so you know we we really kind of focus uh, uh, on a few different big sectors. We've we've had a lot of success in automotive, and uh, it's been a tough, tough you know Corona experience with automotive due to the chip shortage. But um, there's actually quite a lot of growth opportunity for us because as cars become more and more connected, what we're best at you know, which is really getting people from A to B and more and more with EV, that part of automotive is growing really rapidly. And so for EV is really exciting for us. It really brings together all of the things that we're best at and it's a, a tremendous opportunity. And whereas 
some you know percentage of cars would have built-in navigation. So a much smaller percentage would really be meaningfully connected. Pretty much every car in the future uh, is going to be fully connected and fully have automation. So that's actually quite an interesting growth area. We recently announced our Indigo product, which is a, a kind of a digital in-dash solution uh, that pulls together our technology with all the best of breed um, kind of experience that people want. But on the other hand, um, there's so much activity going on in kind of more the big tech and enterprise space. Uh, and, and you know, what we've seen, for example, with ride sharing, um, the, the, the kind of value creation opportunity that ride sharing companies have seen through location technology is enormous. You know, when you have literally, you know, tens, hundreds, even millions of vehicles, millions of customers and effectively connecting them and then getting them from A to B uh, even, even small improvements of how well we do that ends up being, you know, I mean, essentially giving millions of more people a better experience, helping them uh, more conveniently navigate. And the value of that is enormous. Uh, also with food delivery uh, taking off pretty much everywhere and lots of entrepreneurial activity, there's such a, an incredible opportunity for us to help kind of at every level there. And so we, we also see that as a really big growth opportunity for us. And, and there are others, but those are a couple of the big ones. Uh, so Eric, what you just mentioned, I mean, there must be a huge technology play that comes uh, in there. There are so many emerging technologies, uh, you know, in the, in the current uh, era. So what are some of the, uh, you know, uh, emerging technologies that engineering, uh, sorry, engineers at TomTom are working on, for instance? Yeah, so um, <clears throat> I think, you know, there's a uh, there's a lot of traditional software engineering, there's a lot of data engineering, and there's a lot of data science. And it's a pretty broad uh, data science set of activities and data science itself is, you know, covers a number of different fields. But we, you know, on the one hand, uh, we're working um, very, uh, like kind of the embedded space and very safety critical applications that run in the car and need to be extremely kind of tight and efficient and and compliant against safety standards. ISO 26262 is is one of them. And that's kind of at one extreme uh, where we work in technology and uh, and that's actually really, really hard. At the at kind of like a whole other extreme, you know we're running uh, pretty large scale, Spark against the, the, the GPS probe data that I mentioned earlier and running lots of parallel uh, route planning applications at scale and trying to understand map quality and, and really extracting information um, from, you know, using deep learning in some cases and uh, other forms of statistical inference in other cases. So it is, it, it's, a, it's a remarkably broad range, much broader range than most tech companies uh, work. Um, and I, I find that really quite exciting. You know, software engineering in general, which I would sort of include with data science, is one of those one of the rare fields where people practicing need to be able to be working across the, the microscopic nanoscale uh, all the way into uh, you know thousands of terabytes. And uh, the, the dynamic range is kind of enormous. The range of technologies that we use uh, and Programming language is pretty diverse from C++, Java, and Python, uh, even some Scala. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's a pretty good playing field of technology to choose from. Yeah, that's great to know, Eric. Uh, so Eric, uh, you know, innovation, as you say, it's paramount. It's of paramount importance, uh, you know, now. So, you know, people always say innovate or perish. So how yeah. is TomTom, yeah. So how is TomTom sort of, uh, you know, uh, fostering a culture of innovation amongst your engineering talent? Sure. Yeah, I think uh, you know the DevOps is, has had sort of an interesting uh, history in the company because um, historically our map releases, for example, and what our customers expected was were, were pretty infrequent and. Um, as we have shifted toward a much more dynamic uh, flow of data in and higher expectations in terms of frequency of updates and, and freshness of, of data as the entire world just expects more freshness, we've had to find a way to apply DevOps principles also to data. And I think one of the big takeaways uh, from that is, uh, you know, as you start to 
think less about what are the outputs uh, in terms of say target metrics and more about what are the outcomes that we can achieve. One of the key things is to really deliver value er as early as possible. And that's one of the great things about, you know, even cars moving online where we can up, start to update software more frequently. Customers are taking map, uh, map updates more quickly. We can, you can do something and that, that, that effort actually causes something somewhere to change. And the kind of the business we were in in the past uh, had a lot of built-in long, long cycles, whether it was from map data or even, you know, releasing uh, navigation products. It just, it doesn't happen every day. And uh, when you can start to release value all the time, uh, which is what the world has come to expect, it enables innovation in a way that is not totally obvious uh, until you try to go back to the old way. Then you start to realize that you know, the real benefit of, of creating value sooner is that you get feedback from customers sooner, you, get, you understand how it interacts and you can get these really tight kind of learning cycles. And, those tight learning cycles are one of the key ways that you know, that uh, we drive innovation. You do something and you learn from what you do as quickly as possible, and then you do something else and it repeats forever. And that kind of creates uh, a, a kind of a near exponential growth in our ability to innovate. And that's and that I think is what we see, you know, with the biggest tech companies in the world. They've really mastered how to do that. And um, we were somewhat constrained by the market that we were in until recently from doing that. And so we've really seen that take off. I think the other thing is, or another key thing has been uh, how kind of lockdowns and the pandemic have affected how we work and it's much more remote. And on the one hand, there's real benefit for people being together in the office and uh, being able to work you know, in a high fidelity whiteboard situation that's very productive. But on the other hand, that introduces the, these different constraints where office, you know, which office you're in kind of matters. And I think what we've seen uh, through the pandemic is that by working remotely, it becomes much easier for people to collaborate uh, around the world more. And that's had a really interesting and positive effect, I think, on how we get every, you know, people really aligned toward a common North Star, working toward shared goals. Uh, and then you know, it's not necessarily about faster, it's really about value sooner. So sometimes we do something smaller, but we see that value hit and we start to learn from it. And, and I think we're all kind of adapting how we think and how we work um, in order to pull those two things together. And it really drives innovation and teamwork. It's really great to see. Yeah, thanks, Eric. Uh, you know, thank you so much. I think, you know, what you said was so interesting. Are there any final comments uh, that you would like to uh, add before we finish? Yeah, I think um, you know, I think we're really quite lucky in the in the situation that we're in uh, with our team uh, in Pune and working with our team in Europe. You know, the time zone difference is a little bit different or a little less than say working with North America, and um, the opportunity that we see is just so enormous for. Um, really solving the world's location problem and really giving location meaning. And uh, for what we find is that a lot of, you know, sometimes people leave TomTom and come back because they're just drawn to uh, solving a meaningful problem that really matters for people in the world. And uh, we're just, I don't know, the sense of excitement is so great. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to share it with this group. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Eric. Thank you so much. I'm sure, uh, you know, we really appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule and coming here to talk to us. I'm sure our audience will really appreciate it. Thank you so much.